Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Hot Issues on TV3. I am Nuong Falong. Comprehensive sexuality education has become a very controversial subject in Ghana. It seems not to go away anytime soon, as continuously many bodies in Ghana and individuals continue to push government to rescind its decision concerning comprehensive sexuality education. One of these bodies is Family Watch International, and I have with me the president of this organization. Her name is Sharon Slater. Thank you very much, Sharon, for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. How long have you been in Ghana? For about three days now. Just three days? Just three days. What's your favorite meal in Ghana? Oh, have I you think tried any locals I yet? I, yes, I don't know what you call it, but it's that beans and rice that's mixed together. Wachi. Yes, I love that. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> yes. Are you going to be learning the recipe? Yes, I will. So let's, let's jump straight into the issues. Um, give us some statistics, if you have them off head, on the popularity of CSE in the West. Oh, wow. That's... It's funded by the U.S. government mm -hmm. by the, to the tune of $101 million, and we have people fighting it in every state in the United States. The European mm -hmm. Union um, has an, launched a program called Spotlight, and they have Spotlight Africa. They've, they're putting $500 million towards comprehensive sexuality education and sexual and reproductive health, which go hand in hand, because you see comprehensive sexuality education sexualizes the children. It teaches them they have a right to have sex, and that they can get sexual pleasure in different ways. And so then they need to go get the services, the sexual and reproductive health services in the clinics. The clinics make a lot of money when they need contraceptives, condoms, abortions, testing and treatment for STDs, you can imagine HIV. And some of the organizations, the largest provider of comprehensive sexuality education in the world, even provides transgender hormones, and those are very, very expensive. So, so when you say it, it teaches the children to have sex, but uh, what we understand is it's going to be tailored to suit each age group and also it's going to be tailored uh, to suit the amount of information that's given at each stage. I'm um, so glad you brought that up. Okay. The word age appropriate to modify comprehensive sexuality is what we call an oxymoron. The two things cannot exist. There is no such thing as age-appropriate comprehensive sexuality education. Why do you say so? Well, let's start with the World Health Organization. They have published their standards for sexuality education for Europe, and they say that children as young as newborns to age four should be taught about masturbation and how to touch their body parts for I'm, sexual I'm sorry, pleasure. Let's, let's, yes. let's take that again. Yes, um, yes, children zero to four. You can look this up online, the standards for sexuality education for Europe. This is the World Health Organization. If they're saying that from ages zero to four, children should learn about touching their body parts for sexual pleasure, they should learn to explore their gender identities, brings in the transgender agenda. At age nine, they're teaching kids about orgasm and different things. This is, a, this is not the regular sex education, and it's never age appropriate to teach these kids things. Masturbation between yes. zero to four, yes, yes, four years old. Exactly. But how are these kids supposed to understand exactly what you're being? You need to ask taught? these people. The International Planned Parenthood Federation, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, UNFPA, UN Women. They're all listed on the manual for that the UN is pushing. You have this manual? I don't have it with me, but anybody can look it up online. You just Google the International Technical Guidance on Sexuality Education. So this is and, the International uh, Technical Guidance yeah. on Sexuality Education. And I education. do have some quotes in this brochure. We have this brochure that um, lists you know, different excerpts from sexuality education manuals. And on the very back, it has quotes from this manual. There's a little icon here, but it's the technical guidance on so sexuality the, uh, education. So guideline assets, okay. Yeah, if you notice all the UN logos, you've got UNFPA, mm, UNICEF, mm. UN Women, the World Health Organization. Mm. So let me just read a couple of the quotes from that yeah, book yeah, that we I was, put here. I was just going to take one it, of them. It redefines abstinence. It says abstinence is not just choosing not to have sex. It also says or abstinence means deciding when to start having sex with whom. 
Here it says, CSC promotes the right to choose when and with whom a person, and this is for children, will have sexual relationships. So it's the right to have sex. Um, so, so here it says, CSC promotes the right to choose when and with whom a person will have any form of intimate or sexual relationship. Correct. Okay. Mm. Well, but we're talking about children, right? So they, they're very much pushing this children's autonomy to make their own sexual decisions. So you're saying decisions. this will be taught to kids as young as? Well, I'm not sure which age that came at, mm -hmm. but that's not appropriate for any child of minor age. Mm -hmm. And this is for mm -hmm. children of minor age. And, and, and in the first uh, quote, which is abstinence means choosing not to have sex or deciding when to start having sex and with whom. Yeah, that's um, not what abstinence is, but they're well, redefining it. Well, yeah, we can agree, it. yeah, that, that's not what abstinence means. So you, you think um, the CSE is redefining what Well, look at know? the last quote. This is how they define sexuality. Sexuality encompasses gender identity, sexual orientation, sexual, sexual intimacy, intimacy, and sexual pleasure. pleasure. So if you're going to have education that's comprehensive about sexuality, and that's the way they're defining it. It's going to be comprehensive about sexual pleasure, sexual orientation, the homosexual issues, gender identity. And you have to understand, we have analyzed multiple mm -hmm. curriculum mm -hmm. that are comprehensive sexuality education. We've identified 15 harmful elements that are normally in these programs, and we score these programs against those 15 harmful elements. And most of them score 13 to 15 out of the 15 harmful But in, in their defense, most people would say, um, especially for this point, all people should be able to love who they want. This teaching them um, tolerance. Yeah, everybody should be able to love who they want. But what they mean by that, as you can tell by the subsequent teachings in the manual, is that you could have sex with whoever you want. And for children, um, you know, most countries have laws of age of sexual consent. This could be illegal activity. So when they're teaching children the various sexual acts that they can engage in, in many cases, this is actually illegal. They're teaching children to break the law, the age of sexual consent laws. What do you think is the main motive behind CSE? Well, let me just give you one more example before I answer that question, that's if fine. that's okay. Because this is, you'll see this logo, it's IPPF. International Planned Parented Federation is the largest provider of comprehensive sexuality education. They're the ones that make a lot of money. We know that even in the United States, they're making money off of selling the aborted baby body parts. So they have 65,000 service points in 170 countries. So I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna be quite shocking. I picked this up at the United Nations. This is their booklet for HIV infected youth, for children who have HIV, a deadly disease, right? And it teaches them all about sexual pleasure and that they have a right to sexual pleasure. This is the page of sexual pleasure, different ways they can get it. And I don't even wanna mention these on public TV. It's not appropriate for children and it's not appropriate for, but you can read from here. But the worst part of this, and I have to- Why do you think this is important to the United Nations? Because they have been co-opted by a lot of the Western governments in fact, in Ghana, you have um, Sweden, who's announced millions of dollars to push comprehensive sexuality education here in Uganda. I'm sorry, here in, in Ghana. Ghana. I meant to say Ghana. In Ghana, but they're also doing it in other countries as mm. well. Mm. You have the Netherlands. They have the World Starts With Me program here in Ghana, and that has all the problems that we're talking about. It, it tells children they can decide to lose their virginity or not, and about anal and oral sex. Those are the kind of things that these Western governments, they're trying to sexualize the culture. It's, it's, it's a really ugly Why, agenda. Who, who, who stands to benefit from, from Planned this? Planned Parenthood, because if they have 65,000 clinics, they have clinics all throughout. So there's also organizations like Marie Stopes that do abortions here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. They're on a technical team with IPIS. They um, produce the handheld abortion kit, a suction abortion kit. Um, they're all on a technical team creating sex education for Ghana with all the UN agencies. So they get people in the clinics. Abortion is big business. Contraceptives are big business. Condoms are big business. Hormones, um, treatment for HIV. This is all a lot of money involved. So it, it's, there's a huge profit motive. But I want to tell you something personal about me. So I have four biological children but our family adopted three AIDS orphans from Mozambique. Their three children, their mom died of AIDS, their father died of AIDS, and their older brother. I cared for him during the last stages of his AIDS. And for that reason, 
this gets personal for me because this booklet for HIV infected youth on this page tells children that they don't have to tell their sexual partners they're infected with HIV. Right. So let me get this straight. You think they are um, over-sexualizing the culture just yes. so industries and stakeholders within the health chain can benefit yes. from, from the repercussions of I it? I do. I do. They, they could have other motives that I'm not aware of, mm -hmm. but there's an obvious profit motive. In fact, even in the technical guidance on sexuality education, it talks about increasing the uptake of their services. Um, the UN is always connecting comprehensive sex ed with the uptake of sexual and reproductive health services and trying to increase the uptake. So this is an agenda for Big Pharma to benefit yes. out of. Yes, but, but it even mainly Planned Parenthood. Um, and I think your listeners really need to understand what's the deception involved in this. So in 2013, the UN with International Planned Parenthood held this big conference and they invited 20 ministers of health and um, education, including from Ghana, and they sold them a bill of goods. They said comprehensive sexuality education is going to prevent STDs, it's going to stop teen pregnancy, it's going to solve all these problems. Don't you think it will uh, give the children some amount of information so they can protect themselves from these diseases? Absolutely not, because what we found is, in fact, you can go to a website called Sex Ed Report, sexedreport.org. They've done a new study and it's being published in a peer-reviewed journal and it says in Africa, comprehensive sexuality education has an 89% failure rate in African schools for preventing STDs, for preventing teen pregnancy, and 24% of the programs increase sexual risk taking. So, you know, when, if you try to put age appropriate next to comprehensive sex ed, first of all, the things they're teaching shouldn't be taught at any age. If you try to say, well, if, if they don't get this, they're gonna get pregnant, that's what they say, that's what they told your ministers, and that's what they told all the African ministers, but the data shows completely differently. So your minister probably was deceived by those lies like all of the other ministers, and committed And he was Ghana told these lies by? By the International United. Planned Parenthood and the UN agencies that hosted this conference, including UNAIDS, they were a big part of it. And uh, um, your government signed on to a commitment to increase to 75% all of your schools teaching CSE. So our government, you're saying our government signed on to this commitment. Um, but if you're making, saying all these things, isn't it in the detail, isn't it in the fine print? Are you saying our government did not read the details? I'm saying your minister signed on, but this, I, I don't blame your minister, and I wouldn't attack your minister for this because this is done everywhere in the world, and all the ministers are treated the same way and are deceived in the same way. They did this in, in the Caribbean too and got all their ministers to sign almost an identical agreement. They tell them it does all these wonderful things. They give them all these studies that make it think that it's going to be the answer, but they never show them the manual. They never show them what's inside of it. So the government sign up and there you have it. So one of the reasons I'm here is to try to help your government make a decision to withdraw. Because I know your president, I was very glad to see he spoke out against this. Mm -hmm. He said we will not have you know, this bad sexual education in our schools and he's to be commended. Well, the, the education minister has also mentioned that uh, we do not intend to sign it or, or introduce CSE in schools. But if you're saying we've already signed. You signed an agreement. Okay. It didn't go through your parliament. It didn't go through the right channels. But, it, but, it was but the signed. UN is using that agreement. They'll go everywhere throughout Ghana and say, your government signed this. You have to take this. Uganda, um, when they saw the same program on the ground in Uganda that is here in Ghana, the one called The World Starts With Me. So, so you're pushing for us to rescind this decision. Yes, and, I think you know, that will safeguard. Cancel the agreement that we signed. That's to safeguard How children. easy is it going to be to cancel this agreement? I think it's the simplest thing in the world. I think that your Minister of Health, your, edu uh, or your Parliament, or your President, anybody within the government could send a letter to the entities that sponsored that, to the UN agencies, and say, we are withdrawing from that commitment because all your minister did was sign it without any backup from parliament or anybody else. So it would be easy and then they could no longer pressure everyone within Ghana to, to push that. Um, Uganda, when they found the same program that's here in Ghana, 
they passed a law outlawing comprehensive sexuality education. Mm. So you think um, after we have signed on to this, because we have signed on to it, uh, we are now being pressured by these development Absolutely. orgs to enforce what they want us to enforce. Not only that, not only are you being pressured internally, they take that agreement. I work at the United Nations. I advise a lot of the African governments on a regular basis in the policy battles that happen there. And they hold up that commitment. If you, if you do a search for the ESA, Eastern Southern African Commitment on CSE, you will find hundreds of UN documents that point to that as starting to create international law because these governments have said this, so therefore all of Africa has, has to accept it. They use it in a bad way to try to push CSE across the whole world. But, but you work for the United Nations, you said. No, you, you... no. Let me be really clear. I don't work for the United Nations. I work at the United Nations. So you work at the United yeah, Nations. So we so have, you're affiliated with them in some We form. have consultative status, which allows us to go in there and advise governments and shine a light on the many bad things that the UN is doing. You're still watching Hot Issues on TV3i. I'm Nuong Falong. We are speaking with Sharon Slater, and she's the president of Family Watch International. And she is asking the government of Ghana to rescind its decision to sign on to this comprehensive sexuality education. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. You're still watching Hot Issues on TV3. Remember, we're here every Saturday at 12.30. My name is Nuong Falong, and I am still speaking with Sharon Slater. Let's look at the UN. What do they stand to gain from all of this? Well, like I said, it's the UN agencies. If you think about these UN agencies as just NGOs of the Western governments that fund them, that's how they're acting now. And that's the problem. So you have these Western governments, especially in Europe, in Canada, Australia, who believe that Africa is backwards. They need to change all of their laws. They need to accept LGBT issues. They need to have abortion. They need to liberate their children from their parents' sexual values. And so comprehensive sexuality education is the number one tool to completely change your culture by reaching the rising generation and changing the way mm. they think. Mm. So, but is this the same text that's taught in Western schools? Yes, it is. It's, it's very similar because Planned Parenthood is everywhere in the world. In fact, we're fighting Planned Parenthood programs all throughout the United States. We're helping people in other countries. Mm. They're actually doing this everywhere, but they put a lot more money into Africa because they can use it as part of their foreign aid and get it under the carpet. Do you think the Planned Parenthood Association of Ghana, which has been in Ghana for many, many, many years, you mentioned them as part of this, do you think they have a hidden agenda themselves? I absolutely do. I, I, I could prove it to you if I were here prove long it. enough. If, if I were here long enough, because I just was in Ethiopia recently, and all I do is, is, is take a couple of weeks to find it, and I found the manual of Planned Parenthood has all these elements. They have this agenda. Their, their mothership is International Planned Parenthood Federation, and they can't be a federation unless they're pushing their whole agenda. Their main ag agenda is abortion, sexual liberation of children, and LGBT issues. So that's, that's what they're trying to do. So they want to that's increase abortion, they want to increase, uh, uh, liberate children sexually, yes. uh, and increase LGBT. Yes, but I, I think it's, this is a hard to think, believe, it's hard for people to believe this. So mm. you can actually Google this and find it really easily. Right. Healthy, happy, and hot, and just put PDF. And, and one thing that people can go see all the proofs of what I'm talking about, they can just go to waronchildren.org. Waronchildren.org. There's a 30 mm. minute documentary, has all the proofs, it mm. shows all the manuals. But you know, this is a very sensitive issue because uh, the Plant Parental Association of Ghana has partnered with the Ministry of Education and Government for a long time. So, how, how do we navigate? an exit that you're asking? Well, that's an excellent question because you also have the UN agencies that are doing this as well. They're even putting their names on these manuals. So I think the government has to take a hard look at is the aid that they're getting worth this damage to the children and the culture? What is their underlying agendas? And would not Africa be better served solving their own problems? You know. Uganda lowered their HIV infection rates. So, you know, they were lauded through the whole world because they taught abstinence 
and be faithful. And if you're going to be stupid and have sex outside of marriage, then use a condom, right? They lowered their AIDS rates because they had an internal solution, an African solution. Really, the, um, the motto of our organization, it sounds like we're just against, you know, mm, comprehensive mm, sex ed. Mm. But the motto of our organization is family-based solutions to world problems. Many of these issues you wouldn't even be having if the focus of government was on strengthening the institution of the family. It's the center of society. Mm. Let's go back to you. You have worked at the United Nations. Um, we have the African bloc. Yes. What kind of agenda should they be pushing in order to navigate some of these dicey areas? I am so glad that you asked that because I advise a lot of the African countries in New York. It's called the African Group. Then you have the African Union. We re recently had some meetings with officials from the African Union because what happened was we've now helped the African Group at the United Nations understand this agenda and they stand very strong against comprehensive sexuality education. So you have been uh, liaising with the yes. African bloc? Yes. They made sure that comprehensive sexuality education was not included in the UN Sustainable Development Goals and they fight against it. But then what was, was happening is International Planned Parenthood and the UN agencies said, oh, we'll just go to the AU, the African Union, because they're not aware of what this agenda all is. And so they were trying and they got all sorts of documents, working documents into the AU. So, so we just had meetings with them. We're saying Africa was deceived. Absolutely. It, every country in the world gets deceived over this. It's not just Africa. They're doing it in Latin America. They're doing, I just came back from a tour in Mexico. It's all throughout Mexico. They do it in um, the Car Caribbean. I've had governments there ask for my help. Um, it's, it's a worldwide agenda. Right, now, sexuality education needs to be taught at schools. So when you say we rescind CSE, what is the alternative? Excellent question again. I love your questions because they bring out what people really need to know. So the U.S. government used to push comprehensive sexuality education until they saw the damage. So they've just changed and they're championing something called sexual risk avoidance education. And you can look that up online and find lots of wonderful programs. And it teaches children to avoid all the risk, to save sex until marriage. And it has much better results in preventing teen pregnancy, in preventing STDs. So what, what um, Ghana, I would suggest, would be to look into some really good sexual risk avoidance education programs and to even contact the U.S. government, contact USAID. You might even be able to get funding for this. Now, uh, we have the education ministry denying that it's trying to enforce CSE. I, I, I don't think they are. I, I, don't, I don't want my interview to be perceived as a slam on your education yeah, right, minister. Right. I think they're honestly... I'm actually not done with yeah, the question. Yeah, okay, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I just yeah, so um, do you think if they're not ready to enforce CSE, they can be compelled in any way to, to enforce it? I think that if they don't roll out the program, which I believe the program that was going to be presented to them to roll out probably had a lot of these elements, but they were probably really careful because they're getting so much pushback. It doesn't matter if the government says we're not going to put this program through the schools. It's already here. And that's my message. You've got the Netherlands pushing it. You've got Sweden with millions of dollars pushing it here. You have the European Union. You have all the UN agencies. So if the government won't roll it out, which was their big plan, but because of the pushback, hopefully that won't happen. If the government won't roll it out officially, They'll continue to get it in different ways with guest speakers, with programs, with out of school. They even have a phone app, the UNFPA. Mm. You can look up masturbation, anal sex, oral sex, all these issues, homosexuality. You can see what UNFPA is teaching. There's a lot of proof right there. So I think my message is too, that the government and parents have to be extra vigilant. Mm. Uh, they have to look around, they have to find out what's on their kids' phones, they have to find out what's happening in their um, community programs, because they'll, they'll get around it if they can. Mm. And again, they'll waive that agreement, the ESA commitment on CSE, to try to get all these entities out throughout Ghana to accept CSE and their programs. So if we can get rid of that agreement, and it's known mm that Ghana does not accept CSE and, and that gets throughout the public, throughout the country, it's going to be much harder for Planned Parenthood, all these Western governments, all these UN agencies to, to, infiltrate, to, to, yeah, to infiltrate. Now, the, the Speaker of Parliament, you say he arranged for you to have audience with all these faith-based representatives. 
Uh, the Speaker of Parliament, uh, you're saying this is more of a health issue for you, public health issue. But the Speaker of Parliament is on record to have said that gay people and transgenders do not have any rights in life except the right to live. Is this a view that you align with? Um, I wouldn't say that that's the way I would state our position. Family Watch's position is very clear that LGBT people have all the rights that everyone else has. They're, they're part of our human family. In fact, in some ways, because I've written, I've, I have documentaries, you can go to familywatch.org, click on our videos. I've done one on sexual uh, orientation. I've interviewed lots of um, homosexuals. I've interviewed lots of transgenders. There's another one called The Gender Agenda. My heart goes out to them. Mm. They do suffer, and I care as much about them as I care about the regular kids. But I care enough to tell the truth. Someone once said, um, an enemy flattereth, a friend speaks the truth. Mm. I care enough to tell them that going down this path leads to harmful things for them. And so I think our message is one of love and caring. It's not one of hate or, or saying they're not humans, they don't have rights, they're absolutely human. It can be your brother, it could be your son, it could be a family member. I have people I care about who, who deal with this. So. I, I would, that's my message, and that's the position of Family Watch. Thank you so much. That's all we have for today. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It was Thank my you. pleasure and honor. And that's how we end Hot Issues on TV3 for today. We have been speaking with Sharon Slater, the president of Family Watch International, and she says her organization is concerned about public health. Their main pushback against a comprehensive sexuality education is due to public health concerns. Thank you for staying with us. My name is Nong Falong. Good afternoon.